All right, good morning. We have a lively crew. All right, let me give you a couple of perspectives today. Um, my, my words up front, this is not a negative discussion, it's not a poke discussion, it's really, uh, I think, a challenge we all deal with of innovation. Uh, as the title says, I think in the Air Force, we don't have an innovation problem. We have great airmen every day bringing really state-of-the-art capabilities, but it's at scale, right? We have one of the largest singularly run networks in the world at over 700,000 endpoints. You bring in classified and other access networks, and we're well over a million. And so scale is very important to us. So hopefully give you a little bit of perspective today of what the challenges we see as we work through that paradigm, um, apply that to a Gartner model, and then also kind of give you some insight uh, into what we're doing from an Air Force perspective to get to scale. So next slide. You got to start with a good quote, right? Um, I really like the bottom one there. It's all about the unreasonable person, right? We talked a little bit earlier about culture, workforce. It is absolutely front and center, especially when you apply that in a government framework. Uh, working through union issues, working through cultural issues is absolutely key, and, and we absolutely target that every day with our IT efforts. So next slide. One of the things for, I hope you have read the National Defense Strategy, even if you're not in the Department of Defense. Because I would, I would contend right now we are in a new world order with, with understanding what the risks are to us as a nation and also how we dissect that in implementation of the president's budget. Uh, as you all know, the DOD has gone through several years of sequestration, which is part of our innovation scaling problem. Uh, our inability to bring the ships and airplanes to bear, uh, we're now past that, right? We're in a, a, a budget year that we are driving reform, driving readiness to new levels inside the DOD. And so our chief, from an IT perspective, really focuses on three key areas. And I've injected one of my own in there, but his is connect, share, and learn. Connect and share being basically what we are all about with respect to IT infrastructure. Delivering an information environment that delivers at scale and, and connects airframes, connects ISR, Intel, and surveillance and reconnaissance platforms in ways that we have never connected them before to have a global advantage uh, over the enemy and over terrorism, right? Sharing, again, bringing that environment to bear, using cloud technologies, and then ultimately the learning piece, which is applying AI machine learning, again, in ways that we haven't. Whether that's from a readiness, from a, a, an engine piece of when do we do maintenance and repairs, uh, to many of you have heard of Project Maven and bringing new ways to uh, bring AI on top of how we do imagery and collection. And so really fundamental through that is connect, share, learn. It's a very simple process, but very, very telling on where our priorities are as an Air Force uh, CIO shop. And then I also interject the, the, the protect side of it. New World Order, I think you all, all tracking, FedScoop has done numerous articles on this, which is, is very good to see. Nation state threats, supply chain risk management threats are real to us across the board. Uh, and so we are inherently focused on that. So changing the way we manage risk, changing the way we, we buy and distribute hardware, software, cloud technologies is very key. But it really fundamentally starts with our national defense strategy and applying that in how we go to war. So the next slide is really uh, the, the application. I, th I think you're all probably familiar with the Gartner hype cycle. The, the lovely hype cycle, right? The trough of disillusionment is where oftentimes these IT projects get stuck, right? You go to the next slide. So I've, I've kind of applied my own model here just to put it in, in some perspectives. You could argue sequestration for us is one of the biggest trough cuts in there, uh, but it's about politics, culture, acquisition approaches, uh, workforce, policy, all those things of how we used to do things and how we have to do things in the future with respect to transformation, not just modernization. But the whole idea is to collapse that, right? Leadership in the IT space is being able to take you not avoid those steps, because there's steps that we always have to take, but actually drive you through the change. The first piece of it that I kind of skipped through, as I often call it the buzzword bingo side of it, uh, it was cloud, it was big data, it's AI, it's machine learning. Um, those are all good terms, because they get energy behind the government, get energy behind the Fed space to fundamentally transform how we deliver IT services. But it also has to accelerate through that downward curve, that trough. And then ultimately, what, what you're seeing now is how cloud right, can actually accelerate initiatives. Under DOD IT reform, we're also driving shared solutions. So no longer Air Force, Army trying to deliver in competition, but saying, hey, I got this one, you got this one. And we're starting to bring things at scale a lot faster and a lot more relevant to the warfighter at much better cost factors. 
And so those partnerships you see every single day inside the Pentagon, um, they used to exist to some degree. I would say those have accelerated tenfold. And then ultimately success is that repeatability. It's normalized, we all understand it, and we're driving change across the ecosystem. So next slide. This is the one that I really want to spend most of the time on here. I uh, give you some insight of what the Air Force is doing, because I would argue uh, we have definitely had some key initiatives at scale uh, that have been driving fundamental change. But on the left side of the equation, I'll start there. Quantum, uh, to me, uh, I know what a qubit is. That's about as far as I can get with quantum. Uh, but we all know it's going to have some game-changing effects, and we're absolutely invested in those. But those are almost a kind of a follow technology for us right now with our research labs. But we are absolutely engaged there. AI. Again, a lot of articles out there right now, we are focused on the joint AI cell and how do we support that from a service component perspective. Uh, we see day-to-day -day energy in that area that's gonna drive, um, again, maintenance, readiness, other capabilities for the fight from intelligence all the way through operations and maintenance. But what we really challenged with, all right, you see this again in the news, you get 804 authorities, the prototyping authorities, 804, OTA, the different variants of OTA, is applying these not new capabilities, but culturally new capabilities into our acquisition process to, again, deliver and scale. Uh, one of the areas that's out right now is what's called light attack. And what's really fundamentally interesting, tying the IT and the challenges here, light attack is just as much about the network as it is about the airframe. And so think about a coalition shared environment at the unclassified level, but yet secure, that we can provide commercial technology on a commercial airframe at scale in sub-12 months. And we're doing that today with the Light Attack project. And so bringing that network component on to, again, bring all those teams together with our coalition partners is very key. But delivering via OTAs and 804s, working through all the cultural changes and how we think about acquisition is, is very fundamental to that. Uh, a couple other ones highlighting. Uh, Joint regional security stack, so think of it as uh, the next layer of, of global defense inside the DOD. These are centrally run big data um, opportunities, if you will, from a cyber defense perspective, but it's a way we command and control uh, the DOD network, if you will, across all the services. And the reason it's still in the trough is at scale, again, at four, in this case, four to five million endpoints, how do you globally command and control and operationally uh, deliver capability in a very complex and certainly ever-changing cyber environment. And so we're almost at the cusp of coming out of that at speed, working through the final operational pieces of it, uh, but building tactics and techniques at the global scale for this capability has been challenging, uh, but we've had nothing but our best uh, focused on, on resolving them. Some other key areas, uh, our fundamental function in life as a DOD element is not to run networks and not to run email and SharePoint sites and those kind of things. And so when you hear EIT as a service or enterprise IT as a service, this is really the, the, the tenet of moving our airmen back into our core competencies of cyber warfare, particularly defense and all things uh, in our mission sets. And so the EIT management and cyber squadron initiative are very fundamentally tied together. Move to cloud technologies, and I'll talk to our, our movement with Office 365 and our, our common cloud environment. Our fundamental enabler, enablers to take those cyber skill sets and move them into what we call mission defense teams, which is putting people on target on the bases every single day. You could argue it's almost like the beat cop in downtown New York, where we've got people that understand the terrain, they're mapping out the threats, the issues, everywhere from HVAC systems, ICS SCADA systems, to the normal core IT piece. So those are, those are key initiatives. And the beauty of that, from a scale, is the customer has driven that requirement, right? We know the adversary is coming at us every day. And so delivering at scale these teams that are going out and protecting the terrain, whether it's the next F-35, whether it's a tanker, or whether it's our own information from a logistics and readiness perspective, that's what these folks are at. So they are literally on the cusp of accelerating to, to what I call highway speed in that area. Cloud is always, a, I already talked about just prior, I would say we are definitely leading the charge there. Uh, we have gone what we call 2.0 for the common cloud environment, common computing environment, CCE. We're using multiple platforms to drive innovation at the app and at the edge with respect to delivering applications that are secure and that scale at speed. So if, if you think of you know, using cloud to your advantage, building hardened image that are repeatable, provisioned on the fly, and working through what I call the ATO in a day process, 
which is taking that known good image, applying a process on top of it. Another key thing from an agility perspective, term I call USDA choice with respect to RMF or the risk management process, right? So risk management oftentimes is a six, eight, 18 month process, and we've got to get that down to relevant speed, right? It's not about the documentation, it's about putting eyes on target and tools on target to remediate very quickly. And so if you think about meat inspection, every piece of meat can kill you, but you don't inspect every piece of meat. Because if we did, we'd run out of steaks, right? We just run out of time to do that. And so we're going through a fundamental transformation of our RMF process where we inspect the process. It's a USDA and then we inspect and make sure that it's being held to so we can get to delivery faster. Because I think everyone here would agree the next cyber capability, the next application is typically far more secure than the last one that may be legacy that's five or 10 years old. And so we've got to get a point where we err on the side of modernization and patch and remediation versus the RMF process driving the timeline. And then last but not least on this one uh, is our Office 365. So we are almost at the half million mark and it's not just about Office 365. It is fundamentally about bringing the information ecosystem together at scale, right? I'm sure a lot of you have experience. I have email here, SharePoint there, shared drives, collaboration tools, teams, you name it. It's a different server in a different location and sometimes you, they're not even connected. And so the connective tissue that we get with 365 and being able to put an analytics on top of it, data loss prevention, start really focusing on the application and the data security and not just the network security are all fundamental themes and thematics of our cloud hosted enterprise services effort. Enterprise licenses, I won't go into that one much. I mean, that just gets into the efficiency side of the DOD. And then last but not least is a journey we started about three years ago on our HR side. So on our human resources, uh, we moved to a commercial SaaS environment. And it was really the, the principal story of why cloud can provide value. 15 versions behind, first version of Java at the time. Uh, and this was only three years ago, right? We modernized in 90 days. Our application developers could stop worrying about servers being up and start worrying about value add to the customer. And so you start shifting the focus to value on the other side versus the IT commoditization side of it that we often get focused on. So that's a little bit of the highlight. I, this, is, this is almost like speed dating or uh, uh, in 15 minutes, but hopefully that gives you a little bit of a taste of the challenges, uh, both from a, how do you execute some of these large projects, but also how these cutting edge areas, and oftentimes they're not even cutting edge, the cutting edge is getting through that trough it, with speed and agility. Uh, so with that, thank you all. Uh, this is an interesting, it's almost like a rock star. I feel like I got to sing. Um, and I'm not sure which is my better side, so I apologize, that's why I'm moving. But uh, hope you have a great conference and please connect with us over Twitter or connect with us in whatever way and hopefully we can share lessons learned because we're all in the trough at certain points in time and the key is, is working through those as fast as we can with agility. Thanks.